What's up guys, today is day 245 on our journey to 2000 and the first day of the month and I just want to show you guys what happened last month. We basically played 60 games last month, 128, drew 11 and lost 21 games. So we're up 7 games from last month and we basically went from a 1737 to a 1771 rating. Now we can also see here other numbers. This is our current ELO, this is the ELO we're trying to reach. And this is how much ELO we need to gain a day to reach 2000 by the end of the year. And if this number is two or less, right now it is less than two, then that means we're on track. If we win net two games per week, we're on track to reach 2000. So right now it's below two, which gives us some leeway to maybe lose a game here or there extra that we should have won. Anyway, let's get into the game and see what happens. Okay, we're versing a 1784 rated player from Canada, and they're going into a Queen's Pawn opening, which it's been a while since someone has done that. And they're going into the accelerated London. We're just gonna play normally here and not get kind of taken aback by any of our opponent's moves. I wanna bring the knight here and target the bishop right away. I think that's fine. We're just gonna play again, just normal moves here. If they go for the Queen, um, Pawn. Okay, they don't do that. So it seems like they're playing pretty normal moves here, too We can go here attacking the bishop now the bishop has several choices He could also potentially just move the knight forward, but then we would take so that wouldn't make sense Let's just attack the bishop and see what he does Okay, I don't know why I didn't expect that move. Uh, we could attack it with h6 now. He can come backwards then we could go g6 and uh, we'll see what happens, but we're kind of committing ourselves to attacking there, so I kind of don't like what I got myself into. My opponent is playing well against what I'm doing, I think, but I'm pretty much confirming that I'm going to queenside castle here. Now, I could bring the bishop here. If he attacks, I can take. His queen will take. The knight will come back. He could take. We could take, and then kingside castling should be okay. Our queen also covers the pawn, so this could be an option. Or we could attack, he comes back, our knight comes back, showing him that we're going to attack with h5, h4. He pushes h4 or h3, and the game becomes very messy. I kind of like the game becoming messy, so let's do that. So he's temp he's threatening to take here. If we take here, he takes threatening checkmate. Um, we could, of course, take, which I think we're going to do. Take, 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 push, take, take. I don't know. I really don't like what we did here. Let's just take and see what he does. Okay, I don't think that was a great move to be honest, but we can go here and now we're covering that pawn. Maybe we go queen g5, try to connect our pawns together. Yeah, so I like this move a lot now. Um, if he moves backwards, we can take this pawn. I think he's pretty much forced to do something. Now we could also bring the bishop here. And the bishop coming here takes, takes, doesn't really make sense. So let's go here and see what he does. Maybe I had something better there, but this feels better. Something like this, this takes, takes, here, here. Um, things could turn very interesting. Let's go here and see what he does. So it's just exactly what I just said. Takes, takes, here, here, takes takes gotta be a little careful here so i want to actually develop the bishop and then castle queenside so the rooks are connected for any ideas here yeah are there anything is there anything here if we castle you know maybe there is something here if we castle he's also allowing himself to queenside castle or or whatever but then again can he just take this for free so did we blunder here like shouldn't we take here i feel like we should take here now if he comes here we could take take and attack so let's take and now my idea was here, but then he comes here. If takes and takes, I can take. He takes. Taking with check and then taking back would be nice. So I think castling is really nice now. And I'll explain what I mean. I think I could get it done. Okay, so he castles. But here, if here, takes, takes. Check. If takes, takes. Oh yeah, why wouldn't he take? We also have this. Take, take. I don't know. I want to create a target here. I want to bring the bishop here, but then he protects it. We take, he takes back, and that's it. It's it's kind of done. So we can move the pawn here to stop these advances. Probably a good move. And maybe bring the king to b8. Or maybe we don't have to. Maybe we push here, takes, takes. Okay, so he's going for this. Let's take. And 
We could push this pawn, takes, takes. I don't know, we have the bishop pair, which seems nice. If the knight comes here. Ooh, if the knight, okay, so there might be a trick here. If the pawn comes here and the knight, let's say, comes forward, bishop could attack the knight. And we're kind of having an eye on this. So maybe takes, takes, attack, comes here attacking the bishop, takes, takes, takes with che check, takes back, rook comes here. I don't know how much I like that to, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't really know how much I like that. Let's, let's, let's try it. Let's try it. He might take this first, which is fine. We'll have the open file with our rook, so. Okay, well, he didn't do what we want. Well, he did what we wanted him to, and we have eyes like this. Rook can come here targeting the pawn. This targets this. We could come here. Uh, we could bring the bishop back. Let's say we push. He can take here. We can come here. He can take here. We can take here. Where is this knight going afterwards? I don't know. It can go back. This pawn becomes weak, though, which I don't like. Now, what if we go here? He pushes the pawn forward. Bishop comes here. Oh, we can't go there. He's just going to take. So here he takes. We take. He takes. Not great. A bishop might be forced to come back, but then this becomes a target. So bishop comes here. He can't attack because we have this. But he could move his bishop targeting, giving a target on d4, but then we have c5. What am I saying? He still has this. So that was very stupid. That was very stupid. I don't know what the hell I was thinking there. We're just going to play a little fast because of my stupid mistake. Yeah, that was really dumb. Uh, we can go here now, though. But then he could give a check. So I would prefer bringing the king closer. And then going for this pawn push. Very bad. He has a passed pawn now. I don't know why I play it like this. When people play fast, it gets in my head. Okay. So here I could bring the bishop here. The knight can't escape. The knight can escape here, actually. So we can bring the king one step closer and then attack the knight. This could be an idea. He can push here. We can take and uh, continue the game. Okay, so he wants to trade here, protecting his stupid knight. Um, I would rather not trade here, but almost forcing it. I don't know. Bishop here. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Bishop takes. Yeah, are we forced to? I don't want to play on his timeline, but it seems like we're forced to. Rook here. This isn't great. This is not great at all. And I hate, hate how our opponent is playing so fast. Not good for my small brain. There's always opportunities, though. Something to remember. Pushing here allows this. We can come here. Not terrible. Maybe bishop here is better. Okay, we can bring the knight, I mean the rook, here. He can go somewhere. I don't really care. We should be fine. I think bishop here is good. We'll see what he plays. Okay, we could push. He can come here. He can come here. Let's push. I mean, he's attacking the pawn. What else are we going to do? Uh, I want to I wanna come here, here, take, take with some threats there. So let's just come here and see what he does. He has this move. We can come here. Now he is positioned nicely, but the pawn could come forward. We're just making progress slowly, so let's go here. Okay. Now we could push. He can take. We can check. He can come here. What a frustrating position. Or we can push. The knight's gonna come back here. Okay, we have a minute left. Here. Let's, uh, if we push here. Okay, it's, this is confusing for my small brain. Okay, let's take. Push. Come here. And I think we're gonna try to reorient the bishop now. Here, if he takes, we take. If, okay, this is good. I think this is just winning. We have 39 seconds to win this game. Oh, he resigned. What a nice guy. He could have flagged us potentially. What a nice guy. Wow. We're 1779 rated. They didn't even want to give us 1780, but that's okay. Just that comment. It's okay. Let's look over the game. 
I don't think we played it very well, but at least we thought about our time towards the end. So we played with 77.2 or 77.7% .7 accuracy. Our opponent played with 74.2. We had two great moves. They had one. They blundered twice. We had four misses. So it seems like this is going to be a case of us missing moves again. Uh, but we did have an 1800 rating where our opponent had a 1650. I just forgot. We, my head wasn't zoomed in. I just zoomed in the whole the whole time. It wasn't zoomed in. Anyway, let's see what happened here. So right away, I'm already playing it bad. Apparently, um, I don't really understand why this is bad. Maybe c5 is the move here to open up the queen. Maybe this is the idea. Something like this, this, and and this is okay. And yeah, computer seems to show that this is already kind of a decent position. And um, if we just look at these moves, seemingly kind of normal looking moves, they are not normal looking moves. We already have the advantage. And this is kind of a Vienna-esque type game. So maybe the lesson from this game, I mean, it's so early on in our review, but just to play more like a Vienna Gambit style game when people play a regular, uh, regular chess game. Anyway, regular Queen's Pawn opening game. Anyway, that's not what happened here. What happened in this game kind of you know happened like this we brought the knight to the corner which wasn't the best move um e6 was better but it was too boring that's why i didn't go e6 computer also likes bishop g4 also a move i considered but i don't know i just wanted to attack right away and surprisingly <laughs> i played the best moves here um here computer likes knight g7 which looks kind of crazy to me but I guess the point is you're going to target this bishop after all, but your pawn structure is much better. And he has this doubled pawns over here. So I should have seen that. But okay, I kind of connected my pawns here. I went to trade queens. Computer likes queen uh, g5, but it likes d7 even better. Which I was considering this move. I just, I I don't know. I just, I just, just didn't do it. And here queen g5 would have been better. I guess because we're faster to castle and we stop any checks. Is that the idea here? Maybe the idea here is that he could have given a check first, but no, it doesn't look like it. Computer says g4 was another move. Actually, very interesting move because this prevents us from the pawn stuff and we're the ones making the sacrifice. We can't take this because the queen uh, is watching that square. So rook g8 m would make a lot of sense. Rook coming here would be terrible because you could just resign here. So rook over here, knight d2, and here I would um, I would consider just taking this pawn. I mean, this looks like a great, a great position, but of course you have these doubled pawns, which is why the computer says it's pretty much even, even though you're up a pawn. So anyway, we go into this and uh, we try to target this, and here I think I should have taken. I don't know why I didn't. Or f6 makes a lot of sense. So that <laughs> you know, this looks pretty cool. This pawn's gonna fall. Um, the center pawn. So I, I just missed that. I kind of got a little scared that I missed it. I was like, oh my god. I was up here. I was up. If I went king e7, which is an ins insane looking move that I'm not even going to try to understand right now. f6 makes a lot more sense, I think. f6, because if takes, we have takes. If takes, we have takes. Again, this is weak. We have a lot of support for this pawn. If he tries to trade it off, we can take. He can take. This is just terrible. So that wouldn't make sense here. So calculating the pawn exchanges is important. Here we queenside castled, he queenside castled, and we push this pawn forward to stop any ideas here. Computer likes bishop h6 a lot more, which I considered, but I actually thought, what do I do after this move? And computer says, what do you mean? Just move the, the this here. If this, you get this beautiful check, he moves to the side, you pick up this pawn, a lot of pressure going on. You even pick up the center pawn, this is going to fall. You're going to be up two pawns. So very kind of simple idea that I I really should I should have I should have done maybe. But again, I was kind of scared of stuff like this happening um, where I really shouldn't have been. This is threatening a, a check. <laughs> you know, his is not as forcing of a move. And if the pawn move came here, we just PP on the PP, put pressure on the pinned piece. There's no necessarily pinned piece here. I guess the pawn is pinned. Uh, the, the king is pinned, whatever, the pawn is pinned to the king here. So there's that idea. Um, but yeah, you know, th this is, this is, I should have, I should have thought about this, you know, takes, takes. I mean, this is just terrible. So takes, 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 
Oh, here the pawn would be able to take me. You see, so it's so g3 takes, and then I'll win this back over here. And this is just up two pawns. So again, up two pawns, up two pawns, up two pawns. This pawn's gonna fall. I have eyes on it already. Something like this is not possible. So a lot of cool tricks here um, with pawns that aren't on the castled side. So maybe that's something I should think about. But I think pin pieces are the idea here. If the knight comes here, I don't like that. I allow it to move forward. Computer likes c5 as the move, which is a move I considered at one point. Just, <laughs> I just didn't know what point to consider it. So let's say he does some random move and maybe I could push the bishop away is the idea. And even h3 seems to be good just for the future to try to promote. But this was looking a little scary. I think at a certain point here, I was definitely losing the game. Uh, again, they wanted c5 right away. Pawn moves. I'm so bad at them. This was actually a big mistake. Um, I thought this was clever, but it wasn't. I thought taking was terrible here. I thought he was going to start pushing the pawns, but he never did. And he started moving the bishops around. And here, I think I should have just brought the bishop all the way back. And computer agrees. It says that was the best move. It's just, I guess I'm forced to be passive with this pawn move, which is why they prefer this move. Because let's say, for example, the game pr progressed like this. And let's say he pushes this pawn. I mean, maybe I'll target this. But computer likes uh, bishop f8. I, I don't I don't know. Like, if I had a free turn, what do I... Okay, h2 makes sense. But let's say h2 wasn't on the table. c4. Okay, pushing the bishop away. And I guess I'm stopping any play from this side of the board. And um, it, it does look like an annoying position to be in. And here I would win a pawn. And that would just be horrible for my opponent. So... You know, maybe it was a little tricky. Let's see if I made any huge mistakes after that blunder of a piece. Uh, this king move was not great. Computer again liked c5. Could have been fighting on the other side of the board, but then I was making good moves. I think he was just running around trying to flag me. Um, but he didn't realize, recognize the stuff I had here. Computer likes h1. Makes a lot of sense. Um, actually makes a lot, a lot of sense. A lot of pressure here. I don't know how I would be able to kind of contain it all. But the reason here was actually rook d1 breaking through over here, which also makes sense because I was trying to break through the center. And you could see here I had this miss. I should have taken on e5 because the pawn is pinned. <laughs> so a very big miss, but also a scary move to make. Anyway, I go here. Computer likes a4, but I go for this because if he takes, then this is just a one game anyway. Um, here he comes back. I have 50 seconds left. And here I could have actually gun rook e1 uh, if he takes i take the rook and it's a it's a done game but i moved the pawn <laughs> protecting it instead and and the issue here is that he could go d1 and kind of stop all of my plans but thankfully he didn't he went to the other side to d3 to try to activate his king more and now he lost the game and he resigned here because if he takes i make a queen if he takes i get his rook i'm gonna eat everything he's gonna lose for example something like um you know, if he pushes the pawn forward, I take with check, pick up this pawn. So th this, I'm surprised he resigned. That was very nice of him to do. But yeah, this would have been really, really bad. Something like like this, this is just everything's falling apart. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the first game of the new month. We're rated 1779. We're just owning. We're just doing really well. These daily lessons have been, I think, good. Because even if we lose, there's like something we could learn from it. And from today's video, I think it was the queen side pawns. And kind of working around the pinned piece was, was important. Maybe I'll analyze this game a little more. Because there was definitely a lot of cool stuff going on here that, that we missed. Or I missed. And I'm still missing here. But like this move taking here was just bad. Um, computer like bishop F, f8. I should have allowed all these things to happen. Right? Um, let the tension be created and, and leave it there so you know putting pressure continuing tension these are general things but i think we saw a little bit of that here hope you guys enjoyed if you watched this far once again say power because this is the book i'm reading right now power of moments it's a, it's a pretty cool book i like these authors and uh if you guys have ever read this let me know <laughs> and i'll see you guys next time bye bye